<sighs> real meat from real off a mile. It's a big steak I got cooking. It's uh, I got it fairly cheap because it's a little bit of a uh, <laughs> stiff stuff, so uh, you just slowly simmer and it goes all right. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Mr. I'm a real truck driver and all these other things. <laughs> Uh, well, the whole industry is going to automatic. Nobody uses manuals anymore. Well, Tubbs, there's two sorts of manuals in trucking. There's non-synchro mesh, which is your older stuff, like, you know, early 90s and earlier. A lot of that's non-synchro mesh. But then a lot of your Kenworths, your Peterbilts, your more Bay, like your... Not necessarily your Kenworths, but particularly your Peterbilts and your Western Star. They're not even manual as the average person knows it. They're like 1950s and earlier manual, non-synchro mesh. So they have cone clutches inside most manuals. That isn't the clutch you're putting your foot on. It's one to try to get the cogs to spin at equal speeds before they come together and some trucks particularly older ones and your western stars and your peterbilts though that we have fucking almost zero peterbilts over here but we do have western stars are non-synchro mesh these are your 18 gear gearboxes you are going flat to the board in fifth gear and you're only going 16 miles an hour these are your ones with your multi-speed diff, your three gears that make it 18 are your diff. So you go through six gears and then you flick this little tab on the front and it changes something in the diff, like, you know, the gears in the diff. And then you go through your next six gears again. These are glorious because if you aren't the right RPMs, it will not fucking go in. Or to go in and it'll make a terrible crunch noise going in because the gears are literally grating against each other. You guys wouldn't know about the trucking industry, do you? No, 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 no. You've been in it for two months. you got guys like Tony Mullins who have been in it for years. In fact, Tony Mullins actually had his own trucking company at one point. His father ran something around the lines of, oh, 110 to 120 trucks in a fleet. He was managing that fleet. Yeah, that's what his dad done. And that's how, sort of how he got into trucking. And he had, at one point, I'm probably not supposed to be all telling you this, but he had like about five of his own employees because he had his own trucking company. And you got people like Cummins Diesel Power. And you got people like uh, just Aaron and Boris Oloft. And the, oh, huh, I know the fucking trucking. The, Dude, you know sitting in a van and eating. That's what you know. You've been in it for two months as a fucking learner. What the fuck? Driving a fucking automatic. Oh, the whole industry's going automatic. Mm, a lot of people claim the whole industry is going automatic. But when you need to fix these bastards, holy smoke. It's a real special... You need specialised tools for an automatic transmission of a car. Yeah, because of the way all the fucking little, you know, the fucking clutch packs are all together. What do they call them? The bands and all that bullshit. Are you, are you fucking seen inside an automatic transmission? Dude, you needed Mr. X to teach you how to change the fucking oil in a 1989 van. Ah. Are you going to tell us about automatic transmissions? You haven't fucking seen inside one of these things. They're a fucking mess. Automatics are fucking complicated, but see, actually the industry isn't moving to automatics per se, it's moving to automated manual transmission, AMT, which is sort of an automatic but sort of not. It's like a robotically changed fucking manual. It's got like little solenoids or fucking whatever, pressure, little pressure levers in there like little miniature hydraulic rams that are changing the gears for you. Yeah. Automated manual. Fuel efficiency of a manual. 
and the takeoff power of a manual without losing any power on the torque converter but it's actually an automatic but it's a fairly clonk clonk one just ask Darren because his wife drives a smart car and smart cars have automated manual transmissions in them <coughs> if they're quote unquote automatic the reality of the situation is and this has been told to me by people who train me to drive non-synchro mesh crunchy gearboxes that need the exact right RPM you've got to be within about 50 RPMs 50 not 500 50 RPMs to get this bitch to go into gear the guys who taught me how to drive that, those things told me straight up that you only need to do significant repairs on those things after 15 years of operation prior to that it's just minor things like changing the oil and the transmission every so often non synchro mesh manuals are some of the easiest to maintain transmissions the lowest cost the most simple do-it-yourself type transmissions that's why some places are sticking to them particularly places that don't give a fuck about how your knee ends up at the end of the day and uh, trust me with these things they've got a fucking heavy clutch and you really have to put the damn clutch in like you wouldn't believe these are the ones you've got to double clutch you go from one gear to the next and you take it out and then back in again as you go into the next gear you know, you put it from the gear to neutral, then the neutral into the next gear. And, uh, well, this is how these gearboxes work. You know, but don't ask Mr. fucking truck driving community, done it for two months as a learner. He wouldn't know a fucking thing about it. He hasn't driven a truck for one year, let alone multiple years. Now, I drove a truck with a six gear standard basic manual, like you have in your cars. Thank God, because I really. <laughs> It's a little bit hard on your knees with a non-synchro mesh. And I drove that for about six months. Uh, and five and a quarter ton. It was one of these ten pallet ones with the taut liner, you know, the curtain sides. And uh, that's what I've done as a job. But what I actually learnt in was fucking tippers. Like, you know, that you can load with eight ton of dirt and that sort of shit. That's what I learnt in. On to the fucking oil. Oh, oh, an engine that's done 75,000 miles and have to take oil. Oh, oh, what are you talking about? My van's done like a fucking... What is it now? I got it when it was basically just over... It was like about 101... Yeah, it was. It was about 101,000 miles would have done. And I've now ramped that up to... Oh, is it like 104 or something like that? And, uh... Guess what, Tubbs? It hasn't taken a fucking drip of oil, not a drip. Whereas, the other machine, 400,000 kilometres, getting towards the end of its lifespan, that takes oil. Yeah, that takes oil. That's 20 years old. Well, actually 22 years old. And that takes a litre, which is a little bit more than a quarter gallon from one change to the next. Ah! Dude, 75,000 miles, it shouldn't really take significant oil. Oh, uh, what would you guys know? It's just your opinion and stuff. Basically, you're not a fucking mechanic. You better talk to plenty. You're not to... You haven't rebuilt engines. We haven't rebuilt engines, you smug little fucker. You needed someone else. Not your dad, who used to change out engines and cars. But you needed somebody else who met you through YouTube to, to teach you how to change the fucking oil and the oil filter. Numb nuts. And you're telling us we haven't rebuilt engines. Why is that? Because you haven't rebuilt engines? I've fucking dealt with rebuilding engines, bitch. The first propane vehicle, not the first car I had, but the first propane vehicle I had. We had to rebuild the engine on that fucking thing, and we'd done it ourselves. I remember sitting there. Oh, well, it doesn't need the valves. Yeah, okay. 
Talking about valves, we had the engine head on the bench of this thing and I was grinding the valves. And you got this stuff called valve grinding paste and you get a little plop of it on the end and a very small bit of it on the end of a small screwdriver. And you put it in between the valve and the valve seat which is in the head of the engine. Yeah, where your ports go through to your inlet manifold and your exhaust manifold. And you sit there with this little sucker thing on the end of a bloody stick, more or less. It's like just a little rubberized handle on a stick and you've got this little sucker on the end. Like the thing that holds your damn dash cam on there or your GPS. But a miniature one, a little, a tiny little thing. It's probably only about three quarters inch wide. And you rub back and forwards and back and forwards. Now some people get a cordless drill and they put the cordless drill on there. My father doesn't like that method. So I was sitting there, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, for fucking ages. And of course, eventually, the grit in this paste, you know, well, we had old paste and the grit was turning to shit. We had to get more paste. But eventually, either way, your grit wears down fairly fine. So you've got to take your valve out, wipe the shit out, get your little screwdriver, put some more shit in and keep going. You guys haven't rebuilt engines. Fucking bullshit. You don't know what we've fucking done. You got no idea. Just because you can't rebuild your fucking. Just because you can't even get your fucking phone charger to plug in doesn't mean we can't rebuild an engine. I'm looking for a fork here. Here we go. Don't assume anything. Don't assume a fucking thing. Don't assume you haven't got mechanics watching. And sure as hell, don't assume that none of us haven't rebuilt a fucking engine. And that's not the only engine. There's another one that I didn't really work on, but my father dealt with that too. Yet another head gasket issue. In fact, it's in the vehicle that I now drive today. He rebuilt the engine on that. By, uh, well, he went and got the head planed. That's right, fat boy. You get heads planed. You never knew that, did you? They play in the fucking head if it's a bit shitty to make the surface flat and you put a new head gasket on. And lo and behold, that son of a bitch decided it was going to fucking leak again. Of course it did. Piece of shit. It wasn't leaking into the cylinder. Surprisingly, it was actually leaking into the inlet manifold. And this is after he spent a lot of time pulling this bitch apart and he was like, oh, man, fuck me, you know. He was uh, not happy at all. Because it took him a lot of effort to get the head bolts out to the point he actually f fucking wrecked the damn things. So I had to buy another set of head bolts for this fucking thing, as well as a head gasket, as well as get the head blind. You know, and by that time you just about had enough of it. So what he done was he used two doses of radiator stop leak. And he threw that in there and it fixed the head gasket problem. And it was either that or a whole new fucking engine, because it was getting to that point. But, uh... Thank God it fixed the fucking thing. And I'm still driving it today, but it's never had a call and change since then. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't need to, because it doesn't take any fucking coolant, and it wouldn't bloody want to, because then we'd be worried about it. Oh, like a head gasket. And, you know, if this thing does any more bullshit, it's going in fucking scrap metal, to be quite honest. But that was years ago. It was a long time back. That was when it had done literally half the miles it's done now. <coughs> so, Mr. Never Rebuilt an Engine, don't assume anything. Now, I suspect that your rear main seal is leaking like a motherfucker purely due to the age of the plastics, rubbers, or EDPM, which is a specialised high temperature rubber, that is in that seal. Something's fucking up there, and that's why it's leaking at the back main. But 73,000 miles in most things, including my, what is it now, 17-year-old van. Uh, the 17-year-old van that's done 103,000, miles has not taken any oil. It's not 30 years old, but it is 17 years old, and that's not a problem. Now, if you wonder if I'm bullshitting about truck driving, well, let's take a little look at this thing here. And I have cautiously 
covered up several things. And when this thing stops fucking me around here, come on, you fucking bitch. Three stage light that's got issues. There we go. What's this here? No, the fuck would that be? Hmm. Well, I must admit, I can't drive a semi with a trailer. Car, HR, heavy rigid. And, uh. Yep, that would be right. There's my name. Here's my signature, and that's me. So there you go. Here's my fucking truck license. There you go, elbow. Not a learner's. That's a full license. Absolutely. So, Mr. Opinion, Let me tell you something about opinions. Opinions are based on people like me who drive 50,000 kilometres a year, which is 30,000 miles a fucking year. What your van's done in total, I would do in two and a half years. Yeah. That's right. And I've had enough cars. I'm on to car number... One, two... Well, the van's the fifth vehicle I've got. So, there you go. And I know you've had a lot, but I drive them until they fucking die in the ass. I drive them until they fucking... I don't just keep upgrading because my dad's a used car dealer. I just keep driving them until they're dead. And I've recently got vehicle number five. I do more miles in one year than you probably do in five. And it's not based on opinion. It's based on getting under the hood and doing things and fixing things, and servicing things. You want to know a little trick? But you still couldn't do it right even if I explained it, but I'm going to explain it anyway. A trick to tell if your rings are fucked without going berserk and needing special tools. Start the vehicle, leave it running for a little bit, let the engine warm up, yeah, go a half a mile or whatever. Pull up on the side of the road, and with it sitting in idle, take the oil cap off. Now, if this thing just about spits out into your hand as it's coming off, your rings are fucked. If there's absolutely no pressure that you're holding back whatsoever as you take that oil cap off, your rings are fine. Failing that, you can take the plug lead off the top of the coil or out of the middle of the distributor, same lead, if you're not running coil packs, in which case you've... You've got to pull a lot of... Well, either way, you've got to get all your plugs out. And uh, take your plug leads off to do that. And once you've got all your plugs out, you've got a little tool, which is like a fucking cone-shaped thing on the end that's made out of rubber. And that what comes in is probably EDPM, high-temperature rubber. And what comes out of that is a little bit of pipe... And it's got a pressure gauge on the end of it. And I think there may be a little reset button as well. And you stick that in the vehicle while you're turning over, while you're cranking it with a starter motor, and that will give you your true compression. Now, your real compression, I believe, would probably come once your engine's warmed up. Because when it's colder, it's a lot tighter compression. But if you've had a warm engine, and you can get those plugs out with the engine warm, you're going to get a more realistic compression reading because it's not... See, the pistons and all that, it's all very tight when it's cold. So you might get bullshit readings, which will be your cold engine readings, not your general driving warm engine readings. But anyway, all this shit is shown on YouTube by experts, by people who know what they're doing, by qualified mechanics, by people like Chris Fix. There's a whole heap of them. There's another guy who does V-dubs. I forget his name. He's an expert, absolute fucking expert on V-dubs. And he's got a big beard. And he's probably only about my age. 
and um, there's all the shit out there and these people will give you specific answers to questions in these videos. They have people like some questions and they make a whole 15 minute video on it in great detail with real technical shit, shit that I didn't even know. So Mr. Opinion, this is not if I think a McDonald's burger tastes good or bad, this is just opinion of a lot of use, of mechanics, of car enthusiasts, that there's no vehicle 78,000 miles that should be taking a lot of oil. But, you know, it's probably just old age, it's burnt your fucking rear main seal out. But I think your other rear main seal's probably burning out at this point too. And uh, we won't go into that. But anyway, you know, <laughs> we know what we're talking about and we know you don't. You're a guy who's so in love with Iraq and everything Iraqi that you couldn't even explain how the fuck Saddam got into power. You didn't even know. Ah, yeah. We'll leave it at that.